Welcome viewers to Senior Teleclass on Tech TV. My name is Samuel Oben, your instructor for government class. You've heard about government all along in your JHS social studies. They mentioned the word government to you. You also heard about government when you are having conversation with your friends. Now in this class, we'll begin with the meaning and scope of government. By the end of the lesson, I'm expecting you to explain government, discuss the functions of government, and give reasons for studying government. Why you, as a student, want to study government? One will ask, what is government? Now, we don't have one common definition for government. So with respect to our syllabus, we will narrow the definition into three areas. I know you've been reading about the definition of government in different textbooks. I know you have them. But we'll look at these three key areas. One, government can be defined as a body of persons or agency through which laws are made, interpreted, and enforced in a state. I take it again. Government can be defined as a body of persons or agency through which laws are made, interpreted, and enforced in the state. That is one definition of government. Another definition of government, I hope you are ready. Government is refers to the study of political institutions and theories which deal with acquisition and use of political power. I'll take it again for you. Government refers to the study of political institutions and theories which deal with acquisition and use of political power. That's the second definition of government. The third definition, government is the act or process of carrying out the day-to-day -day administration of the affairs of a state. Now, the first definition, the agencies, including the organs of government, the activities they perform in the states, can also be classified as government. With the second definition, political institutions, we talk of executive, the legislature, the judiciary, they have the political power. The activities they perform in a state, in the day-to-day -day running of the state, can also be classified as government. Now, the third definition, you see government, that is the president, or either the ministers, moving up and down, day-to-day, -day, from Accra to Kumase, from Kumase to northern part of Ghana, performing activities that are essential to the state. All these constitute government. So we say that it is a process of carrying out the day-to-day -day administration of a state. Now, we we'll look at government as an institution of a state. 
One will ask, what does it mean when we say government refers to institution of a state? Government as an institution of states refers to the set of institutions. Don't worry. I will explain the institutions and structures legally set up by the state. Don't worry, I will explain the key ways to manage its affairs. It is the machinery through which the will of the state is formulated, expressed, and attained. I take it again. Government refers to the set of institutions and structures legally set up by the state to manage its affairs. It is the machinery through which the will of the state is formulated, expressed, and attained. Executive is an institution. Court is an institution of a state. They are not just there. They were there established by the laws of the state. That is why we say that they are legally set up. We have Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice. Domestic Violence and Victim Support Units. We have the police. We have the army. They are all institutions that are set up by the state to manage the state. The institutions of government responsible for carrying out the political task of a state. We have various institutions in a state. But here, we are limiting ourselves to the political task. And those institutions in charge of a political task of a state include the executive, the same as the president. They are voted into power. So they are part of the political institutions. The second institution, that is the legislature, the same as parliament. They are also elected to represent the people. So they constitute an institution, political institutions of a state. Then we have the judiciary, that is the courts. It also forms part of political institution. Government as an institution is responsible for provision of social services. We remember, we all agree that worldwide pandemic that has affected the entire country. Government is providing social services by providing food to the needy. And this is done through the Ministry for Gender. So all these are forms of political institution that assist the government. Now, again, it is also responsible for the creation of employment opportunities. I'm sure most of you, when you finish school, you are expecting that government will get you employment, isn't it? Yes. Government also does this, getting employment for you when you finish school through the Ministry of Labor and Employment and other various ministerial agencies. Again, through established institutions such as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other agencies, Government maintains cordial relationship with other countries. So you've been hearing Ghana ambassador to US, Ghana ambassador to Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana ambassador to Togo. They assist Ghanaians over there. 
So our country form partnership or relationship with them through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Those of you who will be traveling outside the country, you apply your passports, and that will be issued to you by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So we say that government establish institution through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or cordial relationship with other countries through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Besides, the executive, through the police and other security agencies, ensures that laws and order is maintained in the state. You see, the recent restrictions or the lockdown. See that the police are in the street all over, especially within Accra and Kumasi, ensuring that people obey the laws. They maintain law and order. Not only the police, the court also maintains law and order. If someone abuses your right, it is your duty. You have the right to take the person to court to seek redress. So we are saying that police, the courts, and other security agencies maintains law and order in the states. We also look at government as an academic field of study. Government as an academic field of study is a social science subject that is taught in schools and colleges as well as higher institutions. And that is exactly what I'm doing here. You study government, you can become a government tutor. So we are saying that government is taught in schools and colleges and in the higher institutions, in the tertiary institutions, it is popularly referred to as political science. When you go to the University of Ghana, it is referred to as political science. When you come to KNUST, it is referred to as political studies. So in tertiary institution, you see that someone has studied government, continue with political science. The person is now a lecturer, having attained his PAD, with all the master's degree. That is the, in a career form. Now he's a lecturer, lecturing students, just as I'm also teaching you in class here. You say government is taught in schools and colleges. You see, now you are in this class learning the subject government. Government as an academic field of study also involves the study of political institutions and theories which deals with the acquisition and use of political power. You also learn about the various political institutions what they do, for example, we need to understand what parliament is all about. So when we study government, then we'll get to know that government, parliament makes laws in a state. We also understand that the executive implements the laws made by parliament in a state. So we learn all this as a government student. Other courses studied under government include the study of international relations. You learn about the other countries, what goes on, not only within your country. Political economy, for instance, the effects of this pandemic in the entire world economy. When you study government, you will understand it. Because the economic activity is not moving on 
as it used to be. So what is the economic consequences, even in our life? As a government student, you will understand it. You also study conflict resolution. Local governments, political thought, public administration, and comparative politics. You compare the politics of your country with that of other countries. It's a full course that we study when you continue the studying of government into a higher level. For example, U.S. practice presidential system. U.K. have parliamentary system. So as a government student, you'll be able to compare through the comparative politics. And then you understand why they all have their own peculiar systems of government that they follow. Now... The third part into the full meaning of government is government as a process or act of governing. Remember, when I was defining government, I told you that government move up and down within the country to perform activities that are essential to the citizen. So here, moving into the detailed understanding of a word government, we say that government as an act of governing is the process of carrying out the day-to-day -day administration of the affairs of a state. In summary, the acts or process of governing includes the day-to-day -day activities carried out by the three organs of government. So the three organs of government, you have the legislature. I, can, I know you can see it from the screen. That is parliament. You see the executive moving up and down. That is the day-to-day -day activities. Cutting sword for the commencement of a school building or for the commencement of a hospital, or for the commencement of other projects that will be beneficial to the people within a particular jurisdiction. Have the courts. So that is the summary of the meaning of government. And I've already stated it that government don't have one common definition. So any of these three, when you are asked to define government, you can use any of these to define. Because I said we don't have one common definition for government, so we mostly say that when you are asked to define government, we say government can be. It tells you that we don't have one common definition. I hope you get me right. Government can be defined as a body of persons or agency through which laws are made, interpreted, and enforced in a state. I've done it earlier. That is why I'm moving fast. I know you have the notes. Government refers to refers to the study of political institutions and theories which deals with acquisition and use of political power. So that is the summary of the entire definition of government. Thank you. We'll meet again.